Well, here's part three for this tutorial. Let's sit over to the left and have plenty of this room. And we were right there on measure 44, last page. Now, measure 44's position is the same as in measure 19. This kind of first inversion C major chord here. But of course, in this case, it's broken up uh, into individual notes and so you play it like this you're holding the e with finger five just like this and now the thumb so the only thing that needs to happen is as i let go of the e on my with the thumb i move it out as far as i can now, chances are, if your hand is not particularly large, you probably cannot place the thumb right over the C while still holding on to E a little bit. Although, as you can see here, it's absolutely fine to let go of the top E because this part is being held by the pedal. So, let's just make sure we have this position shown here and now as soon as we let go of the E probably try to move the thumb out to at least D kind of like right there so on that C with finger 4 we'll be moving the thumb out a little bit and then of course as you let go of the E and the pedal is taking care of holding things for us we're going to keep shifting you can see what's ha happening here. I'm sort of pivoting around finger two, if you think about it. So by the time I'm playing that G, I'm most definitely holding my uh, thumb over the C natural. So, right, so it's a kind of multi-stage adjustment of the thumb so that we can right, do that sort of thing. Now, um, as soon as we're done with this accompanimental pattern, the melody has to continue, so we have to play. Right, just those four notes, while making some further shifts with the thumb, so... You know, all kinds of adjustments to sound out the necessary harmonies. Well, let's see. I don't really think there is anything we can do ahead of time. So as soon as, let's go ahead and use my highlights here, this yellow vertical highlight. As soon as I play that C natural with the thumb, I'm going to work on this readjustment. Right, so I'm stopping on C, that yellow vertical highlight and I'm checking that the four fingers are ready. Right, so it's always about stopping and checking, basically, when you're first trying to figure out some technical problem, figure out what you need to do, and then actually check that you are doing it, step by step, step by step. Right? So that checkpoint, we've passed it, then what? And then we play the E this has to happen right the thumb doesn't stay put even though you see that tied C I'm actually going to cross it out so that it's obvious I don't have to hold it a lot of these notational elements in music are more to show rhythms more to show the sound you're trying to create and not necessarily about how precisely to hold down the keys with the fingers. I mean, I could potentially just re-notate it and, you know, have no C there at all on that beat three, I guess. But it's sort of nice to visually notice that C is tied into the third beat and that it has to continue sounding through the pedal. But in reality, since you are using the pedal and you want to prepare thumb on G as soon as you can, 
right? Let's let's uh, go ahead and add a green highlight now. Right? On that green highlight, you really want to practice this adjustment of the thumb. Right? I think that's a good idea. So then you're already stretched out for the rest of the measure. Now you can see that on the last note of the measure, I don't actually have it tied into the downbeat. So I'm being a little bit inconsistent perhaps, but uh, I was really concerned that here nobody is physically trying to hold onto that A while also trying to play the F natural down below because yeah, my hand, you know, is maybe a little bigger. I can stretch it out, but there is absolutely no reason to do that. So what I'm doing as I play that cyan highlight, I'm definitely putting the thumb as far as I can down to, you know, almost F, not quite. Uh, but then I'm so close that I can instantly let go and reposition my entire hand such that these four, uh, three notes, sorry, uh, are definitely ready. So the position happens right around here. And the notes that I'm trying to grab are right here. Yeah. So with that sign highlight, you know, you're really stretched out. You're playing that fifth finger on the very edge of the, of the A. The thumb is right there, almost on F, as, as close as you can make it. And so you, with the pedal, you'll be changing the pedal right on the cyan highlight. That's really the best thing to do. That's a little tricky. Right, so you could kind of see my pedal readout there. As soon as I hit that A, you can see that pedal move. Uh, right, so that the A, the melody note, A can sustain itself through measure, the beginning of measure 45. Okay, and then, so then we play 45. And as I go up those three notes, I'm definitely aware of bringing the thumb underneath my palm. Something like this. And so that by the time I'm playing that E natural, or not E natural, E flat, let's uh, maybe highlight it with I know, indigo. I'm going to definitely have the thumb right above F. So that's what you see. I've got it above F. I haven't played F yet. I'm not quite sure how to display it. Well, you can kind of see it on this side view camera. It's right there on the F. And I'm trying to be aware of my next move, which is that. Uh, having run out of colors, let's go to d dark red color. Highlight. And so here, I have red on red. Not so easy to see, is it? That's where you have to stop and check. So every highlight for sure, stop and check. Now, by the way, here, here's another idea. When you play that E flat on this uh, indigo highlight, I don't actually think you need to hold it, right? The pedal is doing it for you. It's a nice idea that you're, you're holding the three down, you're curving the thumb underneath. But in reality, if you're kind of pushing into the pro performer category with without having to do, I guess, things too properly, you know, uh, like a student, maybe, is, is one analogy. You, you can essentially let go of that E flat. Right, so that way you don't have to hold on, you don't have to hold the thumb underneath. Now, I always recommend practice doing this. So that, ooh, yeah, I definitely can put the thumb underneath. 
I know I'm feeling the F natural right there. But once you've done it a couple of times, see if you can do this. Just jump right to this F, A, B, C, D, you know, the, these remaining notes of the measure. I think that's a, it's a better way to master it, person. All right, so all these notes. Okay, so then you get through the end of measure 45. And as soon as you play that A, a very similar thing happens as did in measure 44. Let's cross out this, you know, note, which can either be there or not be there. The important part is you want this, mm -hmm. let's use a different highlight, you know, that part. You want to show the F sustains itself. But as far as holding it down with your fingers, no, let the pedal do it for you. But uh, what you're going to do instead is put the thumb on that D. All right, so right there, don't hold on to the F. You're playing the A, boom. You're playing, you're placing the, the thumb on D. So let it be a pinkish highlight, maybe like this. So many highlights. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right, and then it's so easy to play the rest of this measure into measure 46. Now here, you can hold on to the D and just move. So. Wow, I'm really running out of different colors to highlight with. I, I think I've <laughs> overtaxed this system. But uh, let me just go like this. And so on that final D, if you can do this stretch, that's great, right? Because you can obviously prepare the thumb on D, but you also really need to bring the second and third fingers over like this. That's the trick. And I would, again, encourage you to forget about holding on to that D with a 5. Just recognize it has to sound, the pedal is doing the holding. And you can instantly let go like this, so that when you play this G, and you'll see me highlight, oh, not highlight, but mark underneath, you're putting the thumb right here on that B. See that? There it is being held. Right, so that's the kind of motion through positions that you want to execute. Now, nicely, by placing your G, you know, three on G, two on F sharp, you're kind of automatically placing four on A, and that's exactly where it needs to be because, right? Well, I guess I'll just have to keep recycling my highlights on this new yellow highlight. And you know, if four is on A, then five is on B, so that's all very nice. Now, only problem would be this D sharp with finger two, because right now, F sharp, uh, two is on F sharp. But then here, okay, let's continue with more highlighting. Here, you need to make sure that the, the second finger goes on D sharp. Therefore, practice that. As you play the B with finger five, be aware, <laughs> be aware of, uh, of two going on D sharp. All right, so just literally pause right there. Shall I use like some thin highlight line like this? I don't know, I'm just improvising here with my colors. I, I can I guess you can kind of stretch the second finger over to D sharp, but I feel it's too tense, right? You are you can hold it like this. But you can just let the second finger dangle right around here and only bring it over to D sharp in the last minute, in the last moment. Like that, right? So of course, there's that 2-2 two, two slide, which I'll mark in red. 
Okay, so then we go into measure 47, the last measure of this line. Right, the, the thumb is still hanging around on B natural. But here, that's the tricky part. Again, you have seemingly this long G in the beginning of measure 47, but you're not going to hold physically. Pedal is doing the holding. So you will position finger five right here. All right, let's keep highlighting new cyan. Right, and that's a tricky one. You're bringing, so you're doing this wrist deviation here. There's not very much motion from the rest of the arm. It's mostly just kind of, now we're pivoting around the thumb. That's kind of unusual. Usually it's one of the long fingers, but here the thumb is our pivot point and we're bringing the fifth finger like that onto F sharp. Of course, not just the fifth, we need to make sure fourth covers the E, third covers the D, and maybe the second points towards B flat, but don't stre too stress too much about it right away. Just make sure five is on F sharp and then quickly afterwards uh, four and three are on E and D. All right, so that's that si new cyan highlight is pretty tricky. Right, that, that's a move. Right, then as soon as you play the five, let's give it a, an indigo highlight you will be definitely bringing the thumb over to G and I would say right away finger two on B flat. So two notes right here. Very good. Right there you're just set. All you have to do in the very end of the measure perhaps is bring the thumb back to A natural. All right, so that kind of takes care of these, oh, the first line, the, the, the four measures here. Let's review them real quick. All right, so you can see in measure 44, I've got the position down. I'm going to let the pedal take care of holding my melody notes. And I've got slight thumb adjustments here and then here. Now, big vertical yellow highlight coming up. What do I need to do? that uh, position shift then the green light uh, light green highlight coming up what do i need to do just the thumb now with that notice lots of pedals so far with that green highlight no green is done cyan highlight the last note of the measure i'm going to play the five but i'm not really going to hold on to it too much because I change the pedal, catch that A, and now I'm paused on that between the bars position change, right? So I'm leading up to the downbeat of 45. And then as I go up, I'm bringing the thumb in a little bit, but as soon as I hit the E flat, the indigo highlight, boom, just try to move your entire position like this, yeah? So you might be thinking of combining this indigo highlight and the red highlight that follows it into one move. Right? And then you play the F, you play the pink highlight now, and on pink highlight you move the thumb. Right? So those are the kinds of things you're trying to coordinate. Then you keep going through those four notes. Notice I didn't put a highlight down, but there is a massive position change on that final D of measure 45. With it, I catch it. Actually, I'm going to do this. There's going to be a big important pedal moment here and another big important moment right there. Hopefully it makes sense. Right, And as I catch that D with the pedal, I just move down and let go of that D really to one, three, four, well, one, three, four, one, three, two. Uh, and so I'm playing through 46. And as soon as I hit that G with the 
square underneath, boom. All right, the rest of the fingers are ready, yellow highlight coming up. Uh, that kind of weird cyan-ish highlight coming up with the rest, that 16th note rest, that's what you want to do. Place the second finger on a D sharp, then we have the green highlight, slide into measure 47, and I've got the thumb out, waiting to play that B. As soon as I play the cyan highlight, boom, big move. As soon as I play the indigo highlight, reposition one and two. So let's do cyan and then indigo right after one after another. See that? That's the move. I think that's the most complicated move of this line. All right, so, so after indigo. Um, okay, by the way, so far I've been keeping my thumb on the edge of the white keys and that's been really helpful. I, I don't know where we moved it to the edge, but definitely it happened at some point. I'm just going to put a little reminder here that we did that. Definitely don't start it inside the keys, no reason to do that. Right, okay, so measure 48 finally. Um, here you need to start moving inside the keys again because of course you see that we're going to be placing the thumb on the F sharp. I would do it during measure 47 myself. So right around here, slide in. So that the thumb, you might start like this. But as you play those melodic notes and then the 47, just go ahead and do this. So you bring in the thumb right next to the black keys and it's very easy to reach any of the coming the black keys coming up. The only little thing to do there is as you play the D, let's see, right here. You would move the thumb over to the F sharp right right away. Okay, another little slide, but also I would encourage you, well, let's do more highlighting. All right, let's start with the dark. Now, red is too intense for the red highlights that I'm doing, uh, right, red annotations that I'm doing. So here's a pink. And right here on the pink, let's put the second finger on the B flat. Like that. A bit of a stretch, hopefully not too bad, but just go right into B3 and there again just use that fourth beat as the moment to reposition maybe use what uh, orange tan highlight I haven't done that for a while all right. all right so by the tan highlight I am right there on F sharp C D 49 and as soon as I hit this change the pedal you need to move the thumb bring it over like this so let's put a little thumb there let's do a yellow highlight to check that you did that yeah, so that moves. it's just the thumb but you have to do it now here a little bit tricky what's coming up right you see one idea is that again you bring the thumb underneath so that it's ready to go to D but then you instantly have to go when you hit the D uh, and ex you have to expand your other fingers to those melodic notes up top so kind of like I was suggesting up above and before, try to event eventually combine. Okay, so I'll highlight it both ways. There is the green and there is a cyan. On the green, you would make sure 
that your thumb is definitely pointing to D. Barely see it under my hand. And then on D, you definitely want to make sure that you are covering at least these top notes with four and five. Yeah, but kind of think about these two as a single motion eventually. Like once you feel like, yeah, I got that part, I got that part, let's just go for it. Uh, so yellow, highlight. Just try that. See if you can put the thumb on the, on the D, but also four and five on B and D. If you can master it, it will take a lot of the unnecessary stress um, out of these position changes. Right, right there, on the green highlight, just go for it. Right here. Yeah, if you can do this and you feel, yeah, yeah, it's not too bad, then the rest of the measure is very easy. Well, I maybe spoke too soon because just like above, we had some crazy position changes. Here, this one <laughs> that happens right on the wrist. It's pretty crazy. Let's highlight it with our friend Indigo. How would you go about doing this? Well, a couple of things. When you're holding, let's say you're at, at Cyan right now, that's essentially the position, the, the block chord position that you're dealing with. Know, a nice G major second inversion chord, whatever. That means, and what we're going towards at Indigo is another G major chord, but now in the root position. So basically a lot of notes are shared, therefore we can use that to our advantage. Two is covering G, right? We're not playing G with two, but Two is resting on that G and therefore we can be aware of it and move the fifth finger to where the second currently is. So right, right before indigo, two is feeling the G, boom, let's put the fifth finger there. So that's one thing to try to be aware of. Secondly, uh, we are keeping the thumb on D. So recognize that you'll have to put the third finger on D first. Let, let me actually add that so there is no confusion. So right here, huge three. Um, you know, you're, you're going to play these two notes like this, two and three. Okay, so if that's the case, you can also say to yourself, well, I'm aware that my thumb is currently located on D, cyan highlight. And so as I have to make the jump at indigo, I have to maybe be aware that the third finger will go to where the thumb is. So you kind of have two reference points. First, before indigo, it's one and two, right? And then you have to place three and five on those same two notes, right? And just that awareness. So not, not just a single note or single reference point being used. And you're kind of using two of these keys as a double reference point. So you're kind of going for five and three right away and then okay two and one will fall into position as well uh, right there. So yeah I would say indigo is a pretty important point to practice to master this. in measure 50, 3 with a 4. And the reason I do it is because if I kept 3 there, that's really quite a bit of a stretch. So I think it's a good idea to replace 3 with 4 right there. It's not too hard. As well as that, uh, I just realized I might have forgotten. No, I... give me a sec. So at the end of 47, we go inside the keys. I think what I need to also add is that by the time you get to the cyan highlight in this line, you want to be aware that you're pulling 
out right back out onto the edge of the keys instead of being inside right, and that makes it easy to play on the on the white keys okay let's get rid of this but the point i'm trying to make really is that while you're here on the edge of the keys now you have to start going back inside so i would say right here boom push it in so when you do need to play that f sharp with finger one it's easy for you okay now let's go to the last line shall i review 48 49 50 sure let's do it so the first I have six different highlight colors. I feel like I need 17. Uh, but first non-highlighted position change, second note of measure 48. Right, that's just a thumb move. That's all you have to do. Now on the pink highlight, yeah, I guess I have seven highlights, but that red one is a little too mixes too much with my red annotations so not using that anyway in pink highlight i play the f sharp with one but instantly i want to bring the second finger over and i'm about to get to the tan highlight right again my fingers one and two are doing most of the work here just I could actually reposition if I wanted to at the D right before the tan highlight if I wanted to but you don't have to do it oh, oh, got confused like is it here is it here right you have a lot of similar chords and so unless you really work it out you can easily uh, accidentally move to the wrong position okay 48 okay now we're at the yellow highlight 49 instantly move the thumb over to a and since we're inside the keys we're going to start moving out we're going to try to combine the green and cyan into a single move and i'm about to do the indigo so i'm hyper aware of one and two right here and i missed well what do you know that's what practice is for boom i didn't miss well, but I looked down, so that was cheating. Right, I'm gonna close my eyes. Ah, what do you know? Closed eyes always easier for some reason. Because you get hyper aware of the one and two. Okay, and then we get into measure 51. Now I find that, sorry, uh, I find that that last measure 50 is kind of easy. I, I hope you agree. But the, the oh, no, not the very last line. I'm stupid. It's penultimate line. The adagio has two lines. Kind of hard, easy to, re, to forget how much music you have <laughs> when you're zoomed in. All right, so here we are. Oh, we've got this adagio. And we arrive like this. beat of 51 we're inside the keys we've got that chord down and the pedal goes down now as soon as the pedal goes down that's probably where you want to start looking at the hand just because it's a lot of leaping around however it's a dajo so no no stress also that e note let's go ahead and start highlighting again the E note is exactly an octave below the bottom note of the chord. Because of this, we can use that to our, our advantage and we can put the fifth finger all the way to where the first finger is. And then, well, I missed one more time. And then once we've kind of established that we can move the fifth finger easily to, to this E, the octave stretch is such a common stretch for piano that we can probably just go ahead and find this E, the bottom E, without ever having to look down with a thumb. Uh, so right, that's the 
downbeat, I'm kind of frozen on the downbeat chord, and now boom, I'm kind of missed a little bit, but... But you can kind of see what's happening. I'm putting the fifth finger on that E, and the thumb sort of automatically finds the bottom E. So that's one way to try it. See if you can find it by feel, since it's an octave, only an octave apart. But once you hit the E, that pink highlight, well, it's absolutely possible to find that fourth finger. Okay, let's do a tan highlight. You can do it how? You, you recognize that, well, that would be an octave. That is roughly two octaves. And without looking, I know that this is three black keys, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. That would be this you know, gap that gives me that extra security. But of course, if this is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, well, A finger one, four is right here. However, if you don't feel comfortable, go ahead and look. Here's your E and then A. Okay, you found the A, but also don't just find the A. Let's make sure that the tan highlight gets the proper position symbol. And that's right here. So the proper block chord would be all these five notes, right? So if I put a bracket on them, boom. Kind of like this, but not including that C sharp. So I'm going to take it out of, the, <laughs> of that bracket. Okay, so make sure you can find this red, red, uh, yes, red rectangle tan highlight position. I would encourage you to stay inside the keys at all points. Right, stay inside the keys here, and then once you've found this tan position, make sure that the uh, thumb is right next to the C sharp. If you put it here, it's just a, a lot of unnecessary motion. So get comfortable with the long fingers between the black keys. Right, and then you see those proper uh, let vibrate half uh, you know slur uh, uh, no tie like lines tie like symbols but it again just means catch them on the pedal play the note staccato and just move down again you can probably practice a lot and eventually find that a blind but i would just go like just look down there it is Now I'm still preferring this method of shaping the octave, A, A, and then using the thumb to play the bottom note. But you can certainly try to use like a second finger, that's fine too. You can do that if you want. Anyway, I'm not putting any specific fingers on those low notes. Right, and as soon as you hit that A, don't do this lingering. Hold the A because it's written as a long note. It's written as a long note just so I don't have too many rests to notate. The reality is you're going to be leaping up as soon as you hit it so that you can prepare this massive position. G minor for second inversion chord, right, of, of those four notes that are coming up. And same thing, stay inside the, the keys. And so maybe as a reminder, I'll keep drawing that arrow right here. All right, so we've arrived at this resonance and we're shaping the next bracket. How about I, I do a highlight, let's say right here, make sure you've got the next position prepared. And then same thing, you want to leap, leap down as soon as, as soon as you get to the green highlight. Right, lots of leaping around in the end of this arrangement. And again, I'm, I'm drawing the octave. Because I think that's easier to shape than just a single note. Right, right, right away. 
and then as soon as you hit that you leap up and you have the position right here let's say that's a cyan highlight yeah so a lot of going back and forth back and forth remember it's adagio so you do not have to play fast at all however what you do still have to do very fast is the leaps so none of this oh green oh i have to move as well okay okay oh now i have to go to this cyan thing okay i'm here instead practice this kind of jerky muscle twitching uh technique right so i'm there and i have all this time to verify that yeah i'm on the right note i'm waiting to play it because it's still not time yet it's like one two three one two right 16th notes one two three one two three one two three so i have plenty of time green and leap so you, you green and leap in the same time you don't go green oh now leap no it's more like right it's a single motion i like to talk about side swiping on the keys there's the regular down plane right where you're just worrying about pressing the notes down but then there is this you're gonna you always you're moving as you're playing the key and that's the, the case here so then we're at the cyan highlight now here i would into measure what is it 51 two, three, four. go ahead and pull out, back out onto the edge of the keys like this and as soon as i hit that Shall we make it indigo? Yeah. Instant leap. Right? Those notes are going to ring. You've got the pedal down, so do not hold them. Instead, be aware of this. Move right here. Now there, again, you see those little half moons those let vibrate signs so just use them to your advantage don't hold the, that chord move into the new position now what is the new position the new position is the g major chord coming up in 55 so let's shape it right here All right last position change in in measure 54 would be this so then you simply play the third finger and 55 downbeat and we're just arpeggiating through the g major slightly adjusting second and third nothing to worry about right and just so we can do that little bit of chromaticism in the end push your where is it? push your hand inside the keyboard there it is yeah so a flat with the thumb and pu pull back out here big ralentando there no rush I'm not marking up the final positions. You really would just benefit from looking down at your hand if you want. Right here, let's let's put a few highlights right on that rest. You can go literally over the thumb, so it's easier to aim towards the D with finger five. But at some point, you're just going to confidently place three and one on these uh, two notes yeah d and g and then just keep going down d g it's the same same position keeps moving down the octave all right finally we're done with uh, tutorialing on this arrangement 
I could go through the whole thing, I guess. From from top to bottom, this this page. I made a rhythmic mistake there, it should be a Then E slides down onto the downbeat and then something like that so um write any comments questions but yeah uh, hopefully it's clear what to do to play this piece okay now i have to work on more arrangements i guess <laughs> 